Hi, this is Mark from Groupable, and today I'm going to show you how you manage the contact info for your contacts and your members, things like uh, postal addresses, phone numbers, emails, that type of thing. So I'm going to log in here and get started. And remember, I landed my dashboard. I've got my list of members here, so I'm just going to pull up one here. And you will note that everybody by default has a mailing address, a postal mailing address, physical mailing address. So everybody's going to have one of those. You can't actually uh, turn this off or deactivate it. You can mark it invalid. So I'll show you how to do that. You can click the pencil that brings up our dialog box. Go ahead and mark it. Say it's valid. No. Go ahead and hit save on that. That will say that this is no longer a valid mailing address. You can click the pencil. Go back. Change that to yes. Make it valid again. That makes it a valid address again. So that's what you can do with the physical addresses. You could also just come in here and you could change the whole thing. Uh, let's see. And hit save. That will change it. You also note that that changes over here on their default address. Underneath the management menu for all the contact info, you can add various pieces of information. You can add a primary cell, add a landline, an alternate phone, a fax, primary email, and other email. You can also add what we call a correspondence address, which is a physical address you would want mail from the organization to be sent to instead of it being sent to your residential. You can add a snowbird address, which is an address where someone might go for a certain part of the year. You can add a work address, which we track work addresses, but we don't typically do correspondence to them. You can also put in a shipping address if your organization needs to send you something that doesn't fit in typical mail. So I'm going to go ahead and add a primary cell number here. Hit save on that, and you'll note that it's here. It also shows up as my default cell. And for anything that isn't your main physical mailing address. You'll notice that you've got the circle with the minus here. If you put your mouse pointer over that, it will say deactivate on that. And if you hit that, you confirm that, that will deactivate that cell phone number. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in here. Hit save on that. You can also add in an email. I'll show you the Snowbird address. So if I put in a Snowbird address and I say like one Main Street, and you have to give it a start day and an end day for the Snowbird address. So I'll say from 10 1 to 4 15, and I'm going to save that out. And what you're going to see is that now my default address is the Florida address because I'm in that time period. Now that I've added the Snowbird address, you'll notice that I can add a Snowbird phone, which is a landline that the person might have at that other location. Go ahead and save that. Now you see that my default landline is also the, uh, for the, the Snowbird address. If I take out the Snowbird address, you'll see that those are going to revert back to my default stuff. I can put in that landline for my local. And that will show up here. So that's the basics on how you manage the uh, information for contacting your members. All of them, once you put them in, they can be marked valid or invalid if you want to keep track of them. We also have the full history available here so you can show the history of all the contacts that the members had. If you click on here, you can also get the label or the envelope printout for this particular address. That's everything about the addresses. If you have any needs, remember, always go to the help widget. You can look at the information here and search it, or if you need to contact us, you can fill out the form and submit a support request. Have a great day.